One, two, two three. three. Hello! Welcome back to Quality Cat. I'm Courtney. I'm Elena. And today we really want to talk about the gay shit. <laughs> Shut up and sit down. This edition of Quality Cat, we really want to address some stereotypical questions. Queer questions that, um, specifically regarding stereotypes that have to do with women who date women, but can also, I think, apply to... To men, too. To men. Um, and not all of these questions I think we've gotten personally, but these are definitely questions that people hear all the time. Now, instead of answering these questions, you can just send people this video. <laughs> We'll answer them for you. First question is, who wears the pants? Or who is the man in the relationship? When people look at Courtney and I, they might assume that there are uh, gender roles because I tend to dress slightly more masculine than her. Um, but what does masculine mean? <laughs> oh, is that too deep for this video? No, that's, that's the point. Like... People think that everybody has to fit into these gender roles and everybody has to be there has to be like a traditional man who is the one who is making all the money Wearing and the paying for everything and the woman who is cooking and cleaning. Are we in the 1950s still? No. No. Um, but if I would have to say, Courtney definitely wears the pants. Yeah. yeah. And no. there is no man in the relationship. That is the point. Um... No, to address that, though, with a little bit more seriousness, I don't understand why that's still a question today. Because I feel as though there are many modern heterosexual couples that, um, quote-unquote, defy gender stereotypes and gender roles. So it's understood that these types of roles in this day and age are very fluid. There, there's not the woman doesn't stay in the kitchen and cook, and the man doesn't go out and pay the bills. And frankly, with the modern family, we are seeing more often than not both parents have to work, and so both parents have to help out with the children, and both parents have to do the cooking because that's just how roles have been divided and switched now. But yeah, because we, we don't necessarily, especially in the States, live in an economy where one person can necessarily work and support a family of two, three children. Right, yeah. So how is that even still a question? <laughs> and what does that even mean? So I guess that leads us into the second question that's very commonly asked. I've gotten this question personally. Yeah, me as well. How do you do it? <laughs> how is... How can you have sex? How does that work? How do, how do how do two girls have sex? So stereotypically, um, I feel like this question is more often than not asked by men. I've personally, I think, exclusively been asked by men that question, um, and I just feel like I've if a man, by, I've been asked by one, one or two women. Yeah, I've I, been asked by women as well. Okay, I just feel like if a man is asking you that. And or is asking me that, I feel really bad for anybody he's sleeping with in the bedroom. If he does not know how to, if he can't imagine how two women would be intimate with each other, then Sucks I don't her. think your girlfriend's happy. Uh, I think this actually addresses a, a deeper rooted issue about sex education. If we're still thinking of sex as simply uh, putting a penis in a vagina, then we have an archaic idea of what sex is. Maybe that's that's direct intercourse, but sex is a different thing than that, if you're doing it right, <laughs> to please both partners. Yeah, and sexual intimacy is far more than that. And this kind of, yeah, old school idea is is silly. And and it's like sex is different for everybody because what people enjoy sexually is different for everybody. So asking like, so how do you do it? Like you can ask anybody that and mm, people's answers are going to be different. There's going to be a hundred straight couples that you can ask, heterosexual couples, and their answers are going to be different. 
Yeah, but if we want to answer that question, uh, we do it and we do it well. Next question comes to uh, which I have had asked to me before. Have you had this question asked to you? No. Oh, okay. Um, and it was, not surprisingly, from drunk men. And the question is, can I watch? The only time that's appropriate to ask anyone ever is if you are part of a BDSM club and you are in a safe space with a bunch of voyeurs. Is that the word? Voyeurs? Yeah, voyeurs and exhibitionists, which are an the people who would be performing. I'm not an exhibitionist, so I probably wouldn't be into that. But again, don't ask people that. No one wants to be asked that. The answer is yes for $2,000. <laughs> But no, but in all seriousness, it's like you you just wouldn't ask somebody that if you want to watch, there's literally, that is why they made porn. You can go watch. There's a, an array of unrealistic expectations that you're going to get from those anyways. That's probably much better <laughs> than watching, t <laughs> much better for your, for your male pleasure. That, and again, I think this question also speaks to another stereotype and issue of the gay community at large. And I know I said gay community, but I mean the queer community, the LGBT community. And there's uh, something that really bothers me personally, actually, is this association with these communities and promiscuity. Is that the way how do I say that? Promiscuity? Prom promiscuity. Yeah. Yeah. Promiscuous. Promiscuous. Should we Google it? <laughs> Siri, how do you say promiscuity? Okay, I found this on the web for a promiscuity. <laughs> what? Anyway, so it's this idea that that if you're queer, if you're trans, if you're a lesbian, if you're a gay man, you're promiscuous. And I've heard lots of my gay men friend joke around how we are all a bunch of whores anyway. I, I think that's true in only certain cases. It's a stereotype. And it certainly doesn't apply to the rest of the community. So that question, can I watch, is a presumption that if you're queer, you're into that. And that's not the truth. <laughs> yeah, or, and I think that also, this is not a question that we have, but kind of leads into, like, especially being with a woman um, in, a, in a lesbian or, like, a woman and woman relationship, is, like, men being like, oh, do you want a threesome? Or, like, can I, can I join you type of thing? Yes. And assuming that because we're into women, that means that we would be into any situation that includes a woman, which is not the case. It's not, we're not looking... For a male to join us. No, in fact, we don't want your penis. Thank you. Sorry. Which leads into our next question <laughs> is, if you don't want their penis, then why do lesbian couples like strap-ons? <laughs> I, I have a hard time answering this question. Really, it's fundamental. A strap-on is not a dick. It may resemble one in some vague fashion, but it is not a dick connected to a man and and the idea that like like women get pleasure from different things and they enjoy different things and all women are going to have different preferences um and with that in mind is like some women enjoy penetration but that does not mean they want to be with a man and i i think people equate that as the same thing and it's not well said but then again there's also plenty of women who don't like that there's you know it's just Everyone's preference in general. Essentially, it boils down to the idea that uh, a dick is not a strap-on in the same way as uh, a banana peel is not a vagina. Or is that a thing that men do? I don't know. But that's how different they are. And I think also that like um, your sexual orientation has more to do than just sex in a lot of cases, especially when you're talking with like, people in committed relationships. And so you can enjoy sexually one thing but that doesn't mean that you like romantically are interested in a man right yeah i know plenty of people including myself who have engaged in sexual relationships with people and not had a romantic connection and um other circumstances where i've had 
romantic connections with people, but zero sexual attraction to that person. Uh, and it really had nothing to do with what kind of appendage or genitals they had. So we've been recording for a while. These questions have been taking far longer than maybe we expected. I think we're going to split up this stereotype question video into two parts. So stay tuned for part two of these questions. Until next time, make sure you hit that like button if you liked what we were talking about, and subscribe for new videos. And ring that bell so you get the notifications. Yeah. Thanks right. for joining us for some quality cat. <laughs> 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 Oh, <laughs>